you doing? Um, it's been difficult. It's been very difficult, but I'm managing. Take me back seven years ago today, as much as you're willing to share. Seven years ago today, um, I was in a domestic dispute with my child's father. He then shot me and committed suicide there on the scene. Um, that has been extremely difficult. I really never have words, no words. Um, I'm managing, I take it day by day. I trust God and I put him first. Um, and I really just believe that nothing really happens by mistake. And then it, ha it happened again, you had been shot. And then it happened again. And when it happened again, that was the only thing that was going through my mind at the time again. It was absolutely unbelievable again. That was about a month ago, a little over a month ago. A little over a month ago. What happened? Um, I was sitting in my car. Uh, I just heard a fight break out, turned around, looked, crowd of people fighting. And at that moment, I'm like, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here. Um, I looked to the right because I heard gunshots. And I immediately thought to myself, not again. And then what happened? Um, After you heard, the, you heard the gunshots and then it hit you? It hit me. One of, the, one of the bullets went through the windshield. And to shield myself, I raised my arm. It went through my arm. And it is still lodged in my arm, the bullet. Did, and you, I'm, sh I'm sure you went to the hospital? I went to the hospital. And from there, it was just a nightmare. I never imagined going out on a night for some fun, turning into a complete nightmare. And it's still in your arm? It's still in my arm. Did they ever tell you why they couldn't get it out? Um, so they, I mean, we're doctors. You know, they only can assume that it may be too far, and it may cause more harm to actually try to go inside you know, dig around through nerves, bones, then to just see if it'll resurface eventually one day, I guess. But no real certain answers. These are all uncertain. But I live every day with a bullet in my arm for no reason. And it's, is that what we see right here on your arm, right yes. here? Yes, yes. So it has healed. Um, so they won't ever try to go in again unless it resurfaces. Um, and I just have to continue to go to the doctor to check on it, see what's going on. Yeah. When you look at it, what do you think about? When I look at it, I honestly think, you know, that I am strong. The same thing I thought seven years ago, you know, I don't think that God gives you more than you can bear. People often say that God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, but I believe that he creates them to fight life is, life's hardest battles. I don't think there was nobody else who could go through what I went through seven years ago and go through what I went through almost a little over a month ago and still be standing here to tell the story and continue with life. So. Mm -hmm. we unfortunately cover a lot of shootings. Mm -hmm. But very rare that we actually get to talk to the shooting victims. Mm -hmm. What can you what do you want people to know who have never been has never been a victim of gun violence in this way? What do you what do you go through on a daily basis? You go through a lot of trauma, a lot of thoughts. You even experience being angry, sad. And all I can say to that is you know, just continue to keep going, continue to put God first. That's all I can really give, because that's all I've really been doing. And just know that you're here for a reason. People don't get these reasons. People don't get these opportunities to sit here, be victims of gun violence. They, some of them can't speak again. 
You know, I lost a friend almost two months ago to gun violence. Um, she'll never speak again. She'll never be able to tell her experience. So, to say keep going, put two feet on the ground, take it day by day. You know, you lost that friend. Yes. You've been shot yes. twice now, and you're here to tell the story. Yes. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel undefeated. Some people in my seat would feel defeated. Some people would feel like they can't get up again. Some people would just feel like it's, it's the end of the world. But for me, I feel like I'm undefeated. Like, at this point, you have to keep going. You can't stop. You have to be a voice. You have to be heard. You have to be seen. And you have to put it out there. And you can't stop. I want to go back to seven years ago, just for a few minutes. That was covered. I'm sure you saw a lot of people in the community were talking about it at the time because it had happened out on the road and people saw it. Mm -hmm. This is the first time you're telling your story. Mm -hmm. What do you really think is important for people to know about what happened that day? I feel like it is important for people to know how to control your emotions. Talk to somebody, get the help that you need if you cannot control your emotions because when you don't control your emotions, you affect other people. You affect friends, you affect family, you affect your children. You affect, you would affect the whole city. It was covered, you know. A lot of people were impacted both times. So I just say, control your emotions. Get the help that you need. And is that the message that you would give to your father's dad today? Absolutely. If, if you could say anything to him right now? If I could say anything to him right now, it would be to control your emotions. Get some help. Absolutely. How old were you when that happened? I was 24. Okay. Yeah. And your son was with you? My son was with me at the time, yes. Does he have any memory? Um. I think so. I think he's buried it um, because it's so biased. You got his mom, you got his dad. He loved them both dearly. He has great memories of both of them. So I think at this point, from my point of view, looking on the outside in on him, I think he's tried to bury it. He doesn't talk much. He likes to think about the good things from his dad. And I think that's what's best and that what's worked best for him. So. And he's about to be 10? He's about to be 10. Okay. And he's super excited. He's a dope kid. And he's like my biggest and greatest blessing. Mm -hmm. The reason why I get up every single day, Josiah. Josiah is his name, perfect name mm -hmm. for him. So. And he was three at the time? Is he was correct? three. He was going on three. He was okay. like two and a half. Okay. Because he likes to get it down to an inch. So <laughs> he'll tell somebody he's, the other day he was on the phone with his grandma and she said, um, how old are you? He said, I'm nine and a half, I'll be 10 in three weeks. Mm -hmm. So he likes to get it down to the T, like I'll be 10 in three weeks, so yeah. What is your message when we talk about gun violence here in Cincinnati to the gun owners, to the people who are you know, using guns in, during fights? What is your message to those people? My message would be, understand that you have power when you have those weapons. Use the power in the right way. Because again, as I stated, if you don't, you affect a lot of people if you don't. Mm -hmm. We know that just this week, a Cincinnati firefighter was arrested and charged for that shooting about a month ago. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that, that, is, that they have the right person here in this shooting? I would hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope to think they do. And if they have the right person, I would hope that justice is served. What is your message to him today? Control your emotions. Control your emotions. Not only have you impacted my life and everybody in my life, you have now impacted everybody in your life Control your emotions. Do you have resentment for either one? <sighs> I 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, I'm sure, something you'll have to work through every day. Work through it every single day. I work through it every single day, 24 hours, seven days a week. It's not a day I don't work through it. Hmm. Talk about the next steps and what's next for you. So what's next for me, um, I have a nonprofit organization. It's called The Loop. It stands for the loss of our parents. I started it um, after I started to notice that, you know, my son was having difficulties, challenging everyday life without a parent. So um, we go around, we do toy drives. Uh, my goal for it eventually is to just open up a safe space for children to come out and realize that they're not alone, you know. It's people that go through it every day, their peers, adults, and we have to know how to control our emotions through those challenges. So um, that, and just continue to live in God's purpose that he has for me, because mm -hmm. this is one, mm -hmm. so. You just started physical therapy too, so I still in the process. physical therapy, uh, still in the process. Um, it's challenging, but we're gonna get through.